What if an American president did one of the following 10 things or all 10 of the following things? Should he be impeached? Hello everybody, this is Tim. Welcome to the Triple T channel. I'm glad you've joined me here. Thanks for coming along. I appreciate you being here very much. I have compiled a list. By the way, I've got my grill going in the background. I got a couple of ribeyes because you know I'm carnivore, right? That's all I eat, beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. If it had parents, I'll eat it. I've come, come up with 10 reasons why an American president should be impeached, and I wanna share those with you today. I've had to do this video again. I'm starting this video again. I'm not gonna post the first one I did because I got a little too specific, and I know Big Brother is watching, so I'm trying to watch my P's and Q's so that I can stick around if, as, uh, if you know what I'm talking about. But should an American be uh, impeached if one of the following 10 reasons apply to him? Number one, what if the American president is mentally unstable? What if you have a president who is suffering from Alzheimer's or dementia? Should he be impeached? Now it's a terrible affliction for anybody to come down with that, but I mean, really, where do you draw the line? Do you say, it's, it's a sad thing for anybody to come down with these diseases, but the, fact, the simple fact of the matter is, we can't have you in office if you're suffering from Alzheimer's or dementia. Or dementia. I mean, consider the scenarios. You're having to make decisions that affect hundreds of millions of Americans and billions of people around the world. Can you imagine a scenario if, God forbid, the United States got into some sort of nuclear exchange with some company, don't a country, don't you think the president should be mentally fit to make these life and death decisions that have to be made on the fly? If the American president was not mentally fit for the job, should he be impeached? I'm just asking. Number two, what if an American president took bribes while he was perhaps in another position in the, uh, in the uh, American government? Maybe he was vice president and he took bribes. Maybe he was a senator and he took bribes. Maybe he enriched himself wildly with monies of ill-gotten gain. I don't know, perhaps through connections his son had with businessmen with business interest in Ukraine. And if that president enriched himself thusly, should he be impeached? Just for giggles, if you want to Google a report issued by Congressman James Comer, it might shed a little more light on exactly what I'm talking about. But bribery is a crime. Extortion is a crime. Receiving money for political favors while in office is most certainly a crime. Is it impeachable? You decide. I know how I feel about it. Number three, what if an American president was in pos possession of classified documents. Now that's no crime if you're president, but what if that person had classified documents while he was, let's say, vice president? Is that a crime? You know, the most recent president had classified documents and the mainstream media in America makes hay of this. But what they seems to gloss over is the fact that presidents have the authority to declassify classified documents which the previous president did. That's no crime. It's not a crime for him to be in, pos in possession of those. It is a crime for a vice president to be in possession of classified documents. So what if it is found out that a sitting president had possession of classified documents before he was president? Do you think that's impeachable? I don't know, you decide. Number four, what if an American president committed what is an act of war, undeniably, by allegedly blowing up the Nord Stream pipeline, thus disabling the transfer of flow into Russia. Would that be impeachable? Is that an act of war? Consider this. What if the president of a foreign land did something similar to that in the Americas? What if, let's say, the president of Russia blew up a pipeline that fed energy into America? What do you think we should do about that? Would you, as an American, if you're an American, 
consider that an act of war? So, conversely, if the American president allegedly blew up the Nord Stream pipeline, as he perhaps said he would do, is that an act of war? And if so, is it impeachable? Hey, I don't know. Something to think about, right? You decide. Number five, what if the American president sought to fill positions within the government with avowed communist and Marxist? Have you ever heard of a person by the name of Saleh Omarova? Saleh Omarova was uh, named or nominated to be the comptroller of the currency in the United States in 2021. Now, who is Omarova? Omarova graduated in 1989 from Moscow State University, and that is back when the Soviet Union existed and they were fully committed to communism. She graduated on the Lenin Personal Academic Scholarship. She has always been hostile to America and capitalism in her tweets or exes now, and she speaks in glowing terms about communism. So why would a president name her to such an influential position? Because the president said at the time, quote, she would be the first woman and person of color to serve in the role. So there you have it. Substance is, is not important. Symbolism is, in, is what's important. A person's qualifications are not what's most important in order in consi to consider them for a position. It's their skin color or their sexual orientation or their sex. What if the American president said before he was, before he assumed office that his first Supreme Court nominee would most definitely be a person of color and a woman? Should that matter? Did that matter to Martin Luther King, by the way? I don't think so. But this person, an avowed Marxist slash communist, said that she wanted to eliminate American banks. In other words, she said she preferred the government to set values, not markets. She has been an unapologetic communist in char that would be in charge of the U.S. banking system. So, you know, I don't know how you feel about communism, but America is supposed to be anti-communist, and our leaders are certainly supposed to be anti-communist. So if a president nominated someone to a position of power that is an avowed communist slash Marxist, is that an impeachable offense? I don't know. You tell me. What if, number six, what if a president waged an unconstitutional war in any foreign country and I'm speaking specifically, you ought to have in mind, is Ukraine. Now, you may say, well, wait a minute. We don't have boots on the ground in Ukraine. Well, maybe we don't. I personally believe that, hey, maybe we do. Nevertheless, we know that, at least we've heard, allegedly, that we are sending multiplied billions and billions of dollars into Ukraine and the puppet government of, Z of Zelensky in order to wage a proxy war against Russia. Now, here's what we know about America when it comes to war. Constitutionally, if a war is be, to be declared, <clears throat> a declaration of war must emanate first from the House of Representatives. In other words, presidents cannot just simply declare a war and start waging war. Constitutionally, it does not work that way. But of course, as we all know, it has that worked that way for a long time. President Johnson did it, allegedly. President Bush did it, allegedly. President Bush II did it, allegedly. Right? I'm trying to be careful here, folks. Can you read between the lines? Obama did it, allegedly. And now we have another person in office who is waging war, allegedly, in Ukraine, all without a formal declaration from the House of Representatives. So I ask you, if all these things are happening allegedly, is it impeachable? How about you? Do you think it's impeachable? Number seven, the seventh reason a president could be impeached. 
What if a president of the United States allegedly left people, Americans, to die on the battlefield of Afghanistan? Now, if we would bring our, home, our troops home from any foreign battlefield, I would be all for that. And in fact, Afghanistan is a land where we should never have gone in the first place. Did we not learn our lesson from the Soviet Union's protracted involvement, war, war involvement in, Ukraine, in uh, Afghanistan? Apparently we didn't. But the method of extraction, the way you bring your troops home from a battlefield has to be done in a decisive and safe manner, if at all possible. As it happens, when we withdrew from Afghanistan, we left military equipment on the ground, billions and billions worth of dollars, and we left lives, more importantly, on the ground, and American lives were lost. Is that impeachable? What if it was your son or daughter? How would you feel about it? Number eight, what if the American president, very soon after his inauguration, allegedly destroyed the Keystone Pipeline. The whole project just sent packing. And in the process, killing good, really good, high-paying union jobs. Would that be impeachable? Because, of course, we know the environmental wackos believe that oil is evil. We all know that. And we believe that... Um, alternative forms of energy should be paramount. I'm not against alternative forms of energy, but I am for American jobs, and I have not bought into the notion that oil is evil and fossil fuels, quote unquote, are evil. I happen to like the internal combustion engine. I'm all for it, and I think it ought to be going rip-roaring. But by destroying the Keystone Pipeline, we kill jobs and we hurt our economy. And the, the ironic thing about it is now we transport oil via tanker trucks. Now, is that safer for the environment than through, via the Keystone Pipeline? Does that make any sense to anybody? Not to me, it doesn't. I'm just wondering if such an action should be impeachable. Should you fire somebody for making such a boneheaded move? Number nine, what if an American president single-handedly kills the American economy. Not too many years ago, we had a booming economy. Inflation was low, interest rates were low, prices were competitive, jobs were growing, people had good paying jobs, the stock market was growing, interest rates were low, but almost on a dime that has changed, it seems like overnight. Prices, are, prices have skyrocketed at the gas pumps. Groceries are expensive, more so now than ever. Jobs have been lost. Inflation is on the rise. Prices are on the rise. You work more and earn less. Taxes are higher. Should that be impeachable? If an American president is responsible for tanking the American economy, should that be impeachable? If he's that bad at his job, should he be sent packing? And number one, should an American president be impeached if he fails to do his most fundamental duty, which is to protect the citizens of the country of which he presumes to preside over? That is to say, if he fails to protect the borders of his nation, is that impeachable? The United States has a porous southern border, as we all know. Every day, hundreds if not thousands of illegal aliens stream across our southern border. And it's not just Mexicans. It's not just Guatemalans. It's not just Hondurans. We don't really know where all the people are coming from. They could be people who are hostile to America. They could be people who have plans to do harm and havoc on America. They could be gang members. And we know, in fact, that this is the case because, allegedly, the American president refuses to protect our borders. And this is the most fundamental duty of an American president. 
If an American president is guilty of one or more of any of these 10 things I've laid out, should he be impeached? What do you think? I'd like to know your comments. Let me know down below. Give me your comments. Keep it civil, folks. Let's see if we can stay up on YouTube, all right? But I'd love to know what you think about all this. Hey, if you would give me a big thumbs up for this video, I would appreciate it. If you would love to subscribe to the Trailer Trash Tim channel, you can do so down below. Just hit that button and the bell notification. I would really appreciate that. If you find my content valuable at all and you enjoy it and you want to keep it coming, there's a link down below where you can buy me a coffee. That would be fantastic as well. Everybody had a great Sunday. I appreciate you so much for joining in. Share this video with friends and family and on social media. Let's get our channel growing even more. Everybody have a great Sunday and I will see you tomorrow. Trailer Trash Tim, over and out.